Well, good morning. Hope you're all well and uh, staying safe. Uh, and now we've got another three weeks at least of, of lockdown. So our Sundays have, uh, have changed, haven't they? They've certainly changed and we find ourselves settling into, into new routines in, in our lockdown lives. But what's really encouraging to me personally is how we've still in, in many ways managed to maintain our fellowship together whilst being separated by obviously the social distancing. People are ringing each other, WhatsApping each other. In fact, I had a WhatsApp message from Don Nunes this week proving to me that he wasn't in his pyjamas. But you know, Don, the video was only from the waist up. I also had a message from your son-in-law that said you had shorts on at the time, so I don't know whether to believe this or not, but we'll see. Maybe if you do a video for us all, Don, we'll put it up for next week to prove that you're there in your suit, your tie, and your belt and your braces. Anyway, we've WhatsApped each other, we've Zoomed each other, and we've shared our YouTube messages in abundance. And people have been encouraged by, by the love demonstrated one to another in our remote fellowship that we've experienced um, in these last four weeks. I'm sure that as a church, uh, we will come out of this crisis much stronger, having experienced God's love through his people in these times. So we need to keep going in this in the weeks ahead now we know that certainly for the foreseeable future we'll be doing this we need to be keep going in love there there are many things you see in this pandemic that oh, we're uncertain of but one thing we can be sure of we can be sure of god's love god's love especially seen through his people god's love towards us we can be sure of that you see that never ever changes Another thing that we can be certain of this morning um, is that his promises are always fulfilled. His love and his promises, you can be certain of. It's so good in these days of uncertainty to anchor our lives in the love of Jesus, isn't it? He is the great shepherd of our souls. Um, do you know that? Do you know that he is your shepherd this morning? Do you know that every promise that he ever makes is, is always fulfilled? It's always yes and amen. His promises never, ever fail. So what can you and I be sure of in this pandemic, in these days of uncertainty? Well, that's what we're going to think about this morning as we come to God's word in a moment. But as always, let's, let's come to God in prayer. And that's how we should always come to God before we read the scriptures. We should pray, Lord, help us to understand. So let's pray before we come to our reading. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. This is the day indeed that you have made. Help us to rejoice and be glad in it. Help us in this morning hour or whenever we're listening to this just to be still and to listen to your voice. Father, there is so much uncertainty in the world. We don't know what the future will hold. We don't know when these lockdown days will end. But we do know that your love towards us will never change. We do know that your promises never fail. So as we read of you this morning, O oh Lord, as we read of you as the good shepherd of our souls, would you thrill our hearts? Would we know a peace that is beyond understanding? Lord, would all thoughts of this pandemic be cast away as we look to you and find peace in you, together as a fellowship, wherever we're sitting this morning. So bless our souls this day, Lord. Keep the evil one at bay. Let our thoughts and minds be fixed upon you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. John's Gospel. John, we know, walked and talked with Jesus. John wrote down what he saw. John was thrilled by what he saw and inspired by the Holy Spirit. He wrote it down so that we can know exactly what happened in the days of Jesus. So we're gonna come across one incident in John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. If all of this is true, 
All of this did happen. And the words that Jesus said, he said, and they're for us today. Verse 22. At that time, the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you. And you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand and I and the father are one. As, <clears throat> as many of you know, 12 of us from Bethel should have been travelling to Kenya last Friday on a, on a two-week short-term mission. But sadly, because of, of the virus, we've had to postpone our trip to, God willing, sometime next year. A number of us were there a couple of years ago and, and were blessed by the experience as we witnessed how God is moving amongst the people of Kenya, in particular the children that we worked amongst. So please continue to pray for Kenya and for the people who serve God in the baby centre and in the African gospel churches. If you're new to Bethel, you can catch a glimpse of, of what uh, we got up to by having a look at, um, at an extended version of the video on uh, our YouTube channel. One of the things that you will observe uh, on that video is the amount of sheep and goats at the side of the roads. I was fascinated that on our journey from Nairobi to Nakuru, it, I was fascinated to see that, that with these sheep and goats and cows was a shepherd, an old fashioned shepherd, shepherding the sheep and the goats to any bits of greenery that they could find and protecting them from the danger of, of straying onto the roads where the cars were just doing their own thing. The shepherd would call to the sheep and the sheep would follow him wherever he wanted them to go. And I was fascinated by this because it reminded me of our shepherd, the good shepherd of our souls, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are his sheep, as we read about on numerous occasions in the Bible. His sheep who hear his voice. The most well-known passage, of course, I'm sure you'll know, is Psalm 23, known as the Shepherd's Psalm. This speaks of, of Jesus, written by King David, who was once a shepherd himself. And I'll just read the first three verses of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd. In John's gospel, Jesus himself tells us that he is the good shepherd. In, in John chapter 10, just a few verses before there, it says there in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own. And my own know me. I don't know you about you, but I'm so glad, particularly in, in these days of uncertainty, in these days when we need truth, when we need assurance that the good shepherd of our souls comes along. And if we allow him, if we believe in him, he will lead us to those still waters and those green pastures of his grace and his peace. In John chapter 10 and and um, we see, though, some people who didn't believe. Some people who were actually quite hostile towards him. He was in the temple court and he was teaching hundreds of people. Crowds, as always, were drawn to Jesus. Some were drawn by a compelling spirit that, that, that said within them, he's the Messiah, he's the Christ, the Son of God. And they wanted to listen to him because they were compelled to listen to him. Hopefully that's you this morning. But some, sadly, 
were drawn to him in order to just have a go and try and catch him out. Verse 24 in that passage. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you don't believe because you're not among my sheep. Some wanted more proof that he was the Christ, the Messiah, the Saviour. Even though he had demonstrated it with miracle after miracle after miracle, his deeds were plain to see. His words were inspired by the, with the authority of, of, of heaven itself. And yet they wanted more. You see, these sheep, those people, didn't want him to be their shepherd. He told them, but they refused to believe. I wonder if that's you this morning. He's told you plainly in, in, his, in his word. He's told you um, to come to him in, in repentance and faith. Maybe he's told you that on many occasions. Come to him and you will find e eternal rest for your souls. And, and if you do, he says, you will find the surety of his love and his peace. If you would just listen to him and recognize him as your shepherd. But still you don't. And you don't because you are not yet one of his sheep. Jesus went on to say in, in the passage in verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me my sheep he said hear they hear my voice if you are his then then you have heard his call maybe you've heard his call just over these last few weeks during this pandemic but you've heard his call and you now know him to be the shepherd of your life you know him to be that good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. You understand what we were speaking about last weekend. You understand Good Friday. You know that the, the shepherd sacrificed himself on the cross in order to save you, one of his sheep. You know the shepherd to be the light of the world, the bread of life, the true vine, the resurrection and the life. You know that he is the great I am. There is no one greater. And you recognize his voice. And you're obedient to his voice. There are lots of voices in the world, aren't there? There are lots of voices that compete for your attention and my attention. Lots of voices that, that if you listen to them, will send you on this roller coaster ride of, of, of differing emotions affecting your faith. And that's happening particularly in the midst of this, this pandemic. You hear the voice of doubt. You hear the voice of, of the unbeliever who will challenge your faith. The voice that says it's, it's not true, so eat, drink and be merry. These voices are all around us. They're on your phones, and they're on your tellies, they're in, they're in your homes maybe, with the folk that you live in. They're, in, they're in workplaces. These are the voices of those who are not yet his sheep and you find yourself listening to the voice of the created men and women and not the creator the great I am who is the ultimate authority he is the way the truth and the life so if you find yourself on this roller coaster if you find yourself listening to these conflicting vo verses then, then, or voices, sorry, then listen to this verse in the book of Proverbs. Favourite verse of mine. I've got lots of favourites. Proverbs 1, verse 33. But whoever listens to me, the Lord, will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. It's only when you listen to him Will you be at ease without any future dread? 
when you listen to him, you'll be able to walk calmly in peace through this crisis. So back to the verse, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. What is comforting to me is not only the fact that I hear him in his word and, and in, in song and in, in creation, but that he knows me. I, I know my sheep, he says. He knows me. Now, my wife, Mrs. Whiteway, she, she knows me. We've been married 32 years. Got me 32-year badge. 33 this year. She knows my ups and she knows my downs. Um, because believe it or not, I'm not perfect. She knows my good side and she knows my bad side. Which is great, you know. And even though I can wind her up, she still loves me. And I love her. So she knows me. But she doesn't know me as well as the shepherd of my soul knows me. This is how much he knows you. Psalm 139 verses 1 to 4. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. He knows you because he sees your heart. He hears your thoughts. You see, your spouse, your partner, your friends, your colleagues, they see the outside. But the shepherd gets to hear what you're thinking. He gets to see what you're doing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He knows you. And you know what? He still loves you. That's amazing grace because we know what we're like. <laughs> Isn't that amazing grace? Isn't that unconditional love? Despite ourselves, he still loves us loves us, he, he knows our warts and all. And still he rejoices to call you one of his sheep. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. It is vast, it is unmeasured, it is boundless and it is free. Back to the verse. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. So because he's my shepherd, because he loves me, because I hear his voice, because he knows me and is still gracious and merciful to me, I follow him. And I'm trusting that you do too. They follow me, he says. His sheep, we, his people, we follow him every day as best we can as sinners. We follow him beside the still waters where... We sense his peace. We follow him to the green pastures of his word. His word that strengthens us as we follow him in the midst of, of this corona valley of the shadow of death. We follow by trusting him. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will make straight your paths. When we follow him. Trusting him. Leaning on him. Acknowledge him every moment of every day. Then he lights up our path and makes our way straight. You know, as a scout, a sea scout, many years ago, we were taught map reading. And uh, I was tested after having been taught in, in Delamere Forest. I was given a map and a, and a compass and told to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. The whole exercise should have taken just 30 minutes. Two and a half hours later, I got to the checkpoint. <laughs> I hadn't used my compass, I hadn't followed it, I hadn't looked at my map properly, I just did it my own way, I trusted in my own instinct and I got it horribly, 
horribly wrong. I was lost. You know, we follow Jesus by trusting him. He is, if you like, our map and our compass. We trust him and not ourselves. And if we would only do that for the way ahead, it just, it wouldn't scare us if we just put our whole hearted trust. So, back to the text again. John 10, 27 and 28 this time. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Look at what the Lord has promised his sheep. Look at what he has promised from, look, look, well, look at what's promised from the one who just cannot lie. He cannot lie. He's always, always the truth. The one who never, ever breaks a promise. And he says this, I give them eternal life. Can I hear an hallelujah? Jacob, Alice, can I hear an hallelujah? He gives us the paradise of heaven, that indescribable place of, of, of peace and love, that place where one day, finally, one day, finally, all will be well. No more tears, no more fears, when finally you will get to see the shepherd who's been leading you all of your life. What an amazing day that will be. You're his sheep. You're a citizen of heaven here on earth, on a journey, on a journey towards home, towards your eternal home. And one day you will go home and that will be a good day, the best day. I was reading some stories of, of British people who've been forced into isolation in countries that they don't call home. They're locked down temporarily in, in a place that is not home and what keeps them from what keeps them going is that is the hope that they have that one day the chains, if you like, of forced isolation will be unlocked and that they can make their journey home. Home is the destiny of the shepherd's sheep. Here on earth we, we live anticipating that day. And here we live in a world that is, that is suffering, particularly now. Here we live in a world full of hostility. There are already many recriminations over the virus. And, and nations are already starting to fall out with nations again. But here, here in this earth, we do see glimmers of hope. We see glimmers of his love and his peace in anticipation of what is to come. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 says this, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. The greenest pasture land all awaits us, or awaits us all with our final breath. And as his sheep, we can, be, we can be certain of this. These days that we're in, are, there's lots of uncertainty. But he's in guaranteed this. He's guaranteed that nobody will snatch you out of his hand. I give them eternal life, verse 28. And they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. As his sheep, as Christians, eternal life is yours in heaven. You will not perish in hell and nobody absolutely nobody will take you out of his hand he's guaranteed your eternal future because he's paid the price for all your sin what was in your past what was today and what will be in your future all of it all of it was nailed to the cross he's paid the price and he loves his sheep and that love is, is constant. That love is unchangeable. You will never, ever be separated from that love. Romans 8, verse 38. For I am sure, says the Apostle Paul, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
So what can you be sure of in these very unusual and often scary days? Let's hear the text again. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So what can you be sure of? In this pandemic, you can be sure that he loves you, that he's given you eternal life and nobody will snatch you out of his hand. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the truth. A truth that does set us free. A truth that, that gives us so much peace and so much joy as we journey towards our eternal home. We are citizens of heaven, those who believe in you and trust in. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as we journey towards that great and wonderful day, that our hearts will be flooded our minds will be at peace. Our hearts flooded with your, your grace and your truth. And Lord, this week as we enter our fifth week of lockdown, we will be certain of these things, certain of your love and be assured of this. So for everyone who's listening, Lord, I pray that your grace, your mercy and your peace will be upon them all. Turn your face to us all, we pray in Jesus' name. Oh, man. Well, a song that has well, got a bit of a treat for you today. Got a bit of a treat. The song that's been chosen, um, well, that I chose is, is, is a version of The Lord's My Shepherd. And um, Brian and Sue have recorded it for us. And we're going to play it now. So listen prayerfully and put your trust in him today. God bless you. And I'll be back tonight, God willing, with another message. Where is the joy? is the question, where is the joy? Join me again tonight and we'll find out. God bless. Have a great day. Follows me.